Joining us on CAA's On the Line today, presented by Hercules Tire, former UNCWC Hawk, CAA Defensive Player of the Year, and two-time CAA champion, who currently is with the Los Angeles Lakers, Devontae Kaycock. Devontae, thank you for taking the time to join us as you get ready to resume your season down in Orlando. First, how are you doing and your family and everyone uh, during this pandemic, uh, everyone in your inner circle during this time? Uh, everybody's been doing good. I'm um, currently in LA, just kind of taking it day by day. But um, my family back at home, everybody's staying safe, um, staying in quarantine, just trying to take it and do as much as they can with it without being getting into extra stuff that they shouldn't be in. But everybody's good at home, just trying to do as best they can with everything. Well, that's great to hear. Uh, what was life like for you during quarantine? What were some of the activities you did for fun and maybe some of the things you did to kind of keep yourself ready for the moments that are coming ahead? Uh, so basically I just kind of was on the game a lot for sure. And um, I was back at home, but um, um, everybody I knew, all the gyms were closed and stuff like that. So I just kind of had to figure it out myself. And I was just doing a lot of conditioning and running miles every morning. And then uh, Lakers and them, they sent some weights and stuff. So I was able to get some weights through Zoom, workouts, stuff like that. And I was just trying to keep my body ready to some extent. It wasn't the same as obviously playing all those games that we've been playing at that point. But um, I just try to do as much as I can while being in quarantine, while being safe, and also just trying to stay ready whenever we did get back to basketball. Devontae, what, what was the transition like going from UNCW to the Los Angeles Lakers? It was a, a big jump. Uh, obviously, if anybody coming from CAA, from mid-major to um, NBA, uh, but being with the Lakers uh, compared to Wilmington, it's a big jump. Um, obviously, we got LeBron, we got AD. There's a lot of attention, a lot of people watching, a lot of people on us. But I've just been trying to stay as how I should, just staying humble, just being ready. And um, the difference from Wilmington to – the Lakers, obviously, is kind of set in itself, but um, it's been it's a great organization, both teams, and I'm glad to be and be able to be part of both of those. Who did you lean on for advice as you were preparing for the NBA? Um, before I got in or after? Uh, before, as you were preparing for the NBA, uh, who did you know? Was there anyone that you talked to that maybe was already in the NBA circuit, or or just uh, any advice at all? Oh, well, before I kind of just had my same circle. Um, I had my trainer back in Atlanta that I was working out with as well. And he always had my help me with my confidence and staying ready. And then obviously um, people I was working out with, I was at TSF doing my pre-draft. So we had a lot of people going in and out through there. And the trainers, I built connections with them. And I was always talking to them, help, them helping me out of my game as well. But um, um, though all those people, like, it, it's not even just one person I can specifically say before I got in. And um, they all helped me in each and every different way from just trying to understand the game, what to expect, what, like, is the best thing to do for me, and just being prepared. And uh, all those people helped me out. Like, even after the night of the draft, me and my trainer went, got an extra work in at night at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning just because, like, we didn't want to stop working. And uh, just all of those people, they helped me out in so many different ways. But I'm grateful to have each and every one of them part of me. You earned a call up to the Lakers in December. Uh, what did the organization want you to focus on with South Bay? Um, I think they just wanted me to do what I always have been doing. Um, I think I've shown them from the beginning that I can be a very good role player. Um, I can do my job very well. And um, I think that they, they saw from the beginning when I got there, I think I gave them the best impression I possibly could. And um, whenever I was with the South Bay, I just tried to play hard and do everything do everything I have been doing when I was back at UCW. And I uh, just trying to make uh, extra plays for my teammates, trying to make the best plays as possible, trying to help them out with rebounding, um, defense, whatever I had to do, basically. I just tried to go out there and do it each and every time. And uh, I think South Bay saw it, the Lakers saw it, and they just um, gave me an opportunity. Now let's do a little bit of CAA talk here. Uh, you competed against both Jarrell Brantley and Justin Wright Foreman for four years in the CAA. Uh, what was it like seeing them again in the G League? Uh, it was good. I was definitely – I knew it was going to happen. Uh, those, those two guys are great players. We've been playing against each other for 
four years, now five. And um, I always knew, like, I was most likely going to see them in the future. Uh, Darrell's been killing. Justin Wright Foreman's been killing. And I think we're definitely definitely representing the CAA in a very high level. And uh, we're just trying to show people that, like, even if you come from mid-major, uh, lower major, whatever, you can still make it to the NBA and still be able to stick. And uh, that's that's what we want to show. Like, getting ready for this opportunity in Orlando, we're going to go out there and try and give our best bet, try and do everything we possibly can to help ourselves and continue to be in the NBA. But um, it's been good playing against those guys. We've learned from each other, obviously, doing the 3X through you. We've been able to actually talk and connect a little bit more than before. We were always just opponents. But um, now the, those guys are like my brothers. And um, I'm glad to see each and every one of us being successful in what we do in basketball. When you see those guys and, and yourself included, you know, kind of getting your professional careers underway, and then you see more CA guys that are kind of on the draft board this year, such as Grant Riller, College of Charleston, and Nathan Knight, who's at William, you know, at William and Mary. Uh, what, what type of advice would you give them? And, and what does it say about the CAA as we, they continue to have players kind of making a national spotlight for themselves? Uh, I think the first advice I give them is just keep going. Don't stop. Like, there's a lot of people that will probably give us a short end of the stick that will probably doubt us and not think that we can stick in the NBA. But the fact that we're starting to have CAA players being on draft boards, that just shows that CAA has talent. And um, they just got to keep working. You can't. You can't settle. You can't just be complacent. You can't be happy where you are. You got to obviously take where you are and keep pushing and going forward. And um, I think those two guys, they got great opportunities with both great players, and I think that they can stick just as much as we can. And as long as they keep working, they keep putting everything into the basketball game and just putting it into the process, I think they'll be fine. And um, once they get there, they just keep going. I think they'll be fine as long as they just keep putting in the work, and that's all they need to do. Have you taken time to reflect on your journey this past year from UNCW to undrafted to earning all G League honors to playing for the Lakers? Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I talk to my family about it all the time, just from coming from moments and just in this just in this past year. Uh, so much has happened from obviously, like you said, going undrafted, uh, starting off with Exhibit 10, um, getting waived, going straight to the G League. Um, working my way up to finally getting that two-way spot, um, playing with the Lakers. Like, it's, it's been a lot of ups and downs for me throughout this whole year, but I, everything that's happened to me has all been a part of me. And I learned from each and everything, from each and every up and down. And just to keep pushing forward and know, like, no matter what's going on, I can, I'm, I'm going to learn from this experience. And uh, obviously, I'm blessed to be with the Lakers right now. And um, I'm hopefully ready to for this opportunity in Orlando. And I'm just taking it day by day, but I'm grateful, blessed, and I'm happy for this opportunity. What did it mean to you to be named first team all G League and to the all rookie team by the G League's coaches? It felt good. I feel like um, me kind of being overlooked at the beginning, kind of starting to shy away. People are starting to know me a little bit more, and my name is starting to get out there a little bit more. And I'm just, I always just try to, I've been trying to just do what I've been doing, play hard. And I think those coaches and whoever voted saw that. But I was I was happy to get the news that I was gonna be on that and then also seeing Jarrell on that as well. Like that's I think that's big time for both of us. Big time for the CAA and letting people know like don't sleep on the CAA. But um it was great news. It's obviously a part of me, but I'm obviously like I would say never gonna settle. That's that's just part of my journey, trying to keep going up and I wanna be able to hopefully be on a all NBA team one day and I know it's not going to be easy I just got to keep going but I'm happy for that achievement it's obviously a great accolade to have and I'm proud of me myself and also Jarrell for us both getting that and um, it's, it's I'm happy about that. Now you mentioned these two gentlemen earlier LeBron James and Anthony Davis so take us inside your first time in the Lakers locker room your thoughts seeing them and, and then seeing the famous Lakers jersey. So many of my first couple experiences going into the Lakes facility was crazy. Um, obviously, during my workout, first time seeing the whole facility, but none of the players, none of the players were actually there. But first time walking in, that was a great experience. And then coming back for summer league, that was my first time meeting Braun. And um, he came up to me and he introduced himself to me like I didn't know who he was. But for him to be that player and still be able to have it to where he introduces himself, like. He doesn't think he's higher than anybody, but he's a great, respectful person. And me being able to be around him and see him, 
Like he's one. Of, he's the hardest worker I know. Not one of. He is the hardest worker I know. And he continues to work. He's one of the greatest players in the game, but he still doesn't stop working, which is like crazy. Most people in those shoes would be like, okay, I'm the best. Like I don't need to keep working. Like I just got like that. LeBron isn't like that. He keeps working. He continues to work. He's the hardest worker. And me being able to be around that, it helps me to, for myself to know I got to keep going as well. No matter how good you get, no matter where you are, no matter what, what platform you're at, you got to keep pushing and keep progressing to get to working to be the best. And so being around that is cool. Obviously, AD, a wonderful big. Like, he's he's so tough. Like, he's, he's one of the greatest bigs I've ever seen, especially in person. And being able to play with him, um, me, him, Kostas, we play one-on-one a couple times. And just being able to learn from him. DeMarcus Cousin was there at that time. He was actually watching us and gave me feedback as well. And it's, I'm learning so much from all these different people. And we got so many vets. And it's just it's so many so many different things around. But it's such a great learning experience that I'm just able to gather all the information and just keep going with the future with it. Wrapping up today with Devontae K. Cock, current Los Angeles Laker, former UNCW Seahawk. Uh, as you head to Orlando, uh, Devontae, what, what are your goals now for the rest of the season? Uh, just, I think my main goal is obviously just staying ready. Um, I, I think I, I had a good chance to get a couple minutes in. Uh, may not be a lot, but it could be no matter what. You never know what could happen with this whole thing going on. But I just want to stay prepared like I always have been. I go out there, do my, do my job, do my role and try to help my team win as much as possible. Um, just going out there, have fun, and obviously enjoy this whole experience. And I just want to go out there and have fun with it. Well, Devontae, thank you so much for joining us today. Safe travels, stay healthy uh, in Orlando, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you on the court here soon. What's up? Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me.